Hello and welcome. You're watching Commodity Champions and I'm Anisha Gupta. It has been a fairly good start for the industrial metals in 2023 with copper, aluminum and zinc nearing seven-month highs, supported by weak US dollar and China's economic situation. On a monthly basis, copper prices have surged 12%, zinc 14%, but tin has seen a big rally and gained 23%. So will the metal space sustain gains this year? What are the factors that will impact the prices? To get answers to all of these questions, I am now joined by Ole Hansen. He's head of commodity strategy at Saxo Bank. Ole, hi, good to have you. And what a start to 2023. The whole metal sector has been a buzz. Is it all the China pent-up buying or do you think there is actual on-ground buying and not just the sentiment playing part? I think as we start the year, the, uh, it's a lot to do with sentiment, to do with the markets uh, or traders positioning themselves into markets they believe will have a have a good run in uh, in 23. Uh, so obviously, we kicked off the year with uh, breaking out some some key technical levels that has triggered some additional momentum buying. So, so um, basically, what we're saying here, both for gold and and industrial metals, is that the, while we believe the direction is correct. We think the timing may just be a little bit off because uh, right now it's I think it's mostly just uh, inter investor buying getting into the market and following that we need to basically the hard work really begins that's when we need to see that real demand also actually picks up to justify the price levels that we have we have achieved over the last month. Well, absolutely. Uh, how much is the part inventories playing here all, also, all Because we've seen LME inventories decline uh, to half of where we were in 2021. And the chart will show you on how nickel, zinc, aluminum, all of these inventories have declined anywhere between 40 to 80 percent in 2022. Well, visible stocks uh, across the industrial metal space uh, are, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty frightening the graph if you look at the long term developments that they are very weak or very low if you look at visible stocks in uh, monitored by exchanges in London, uh, Shanghai and New York. And uh, that does obviously raise the, the question about what, what, what happens if we do see that uh, a, a potentially strong pickup in demand at a time where you, uh, you could also argue that supply should not be forgotten. The supply side is also somewhat challenged. We've got the with copper right now, the, 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 the riots in Peru having an impact on potentially 2 percent of the global output. And it just highlights also that the, even though there are expectations for a industry responding to higher prices by producing more, there are challenges uh, ahead that uh, that would potentially keep that uh, that supply at, at a relatively low level, and and that will underpin prices as well. Mm. But I, I'll take the question different for both. Uh, starting with supplies first, and we do understand that there are inventories which are already on the lower side. How about the capex investments? There are some labor negotiations also coming on the way. What is it that concerns you the most about supplies? Simply that prices are actually, even though they are relatively high, they are still not high enough uh, really to incentivize mining uh, mining companies to uh, to go all singing, all dancing into uh, new finding new products. And at the same time, we're also seeing that ore grades is uh, is is coming down. So you need more material out of the ground in order to get the get the uh, the, met the the metals that you're looking for. It's uh, you mentioned weights uh, negotiations. That's going to be a very tricky one. Uh, so general cost of production has been going up and that basically means that we need high prices in order to sustain the the, the outlook for in, for investments and the uh, the ability to to produce the metals that we are going to be requiring in the coming years especially as we move towards the continue to move towards the green transition which we all know requires uh, metals of all shapes and sizes and colors Mm. So, you know, uh, various banks and brokerages, including yours, uh, all have mentioned that the metal prices will go up from here. And if I read all of those reports, the increase, uh, uh, the consensus falls between 10 to 20 percent of a forecast. What is your sense on what metals are expected to do better than the others? Well, I, I stick with I stick with copper. I, I really like copper. I, I like uh, aluminium as well from the supply side uh, perspective. Um, these are these are metals where we're also seeing quite a lot of the the, the concentrated interest from from investors uh, coming in. Uh, so that these are really the ones I will uh, I will I like and I stick to uh, liquidity. You mentioned tin, twenty three percent up. It is obviously a very a, a dismal uh, liquid uh, liquidity uh, market, which uh, which obviously is only primarily used by by actual physical users. So um, so I, I keep a close eye on on copper and aluminium. I'll say. Mm. Uh, and how much of gains are you anticipating for this year? Come again. Well, how much of gains are you anticipating for copper and aluminum for this year? Well, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we do see a new uh, record high in uh, in, in both uh, copper, uh, 
the ten and a half thousand level is obviously within reach, but I, I believe we will have to we will see a pause here within the next months or so. So, as I said, the the direction is right, the timing is slightly off. I want to see the hard work now to also support the uh, the the pickup, and that potential may not come until until the second half. So, uh, so still believing that we could see these uh, new record highs in as we move into the into the second half after a bit of a lull here as we as we move towards the the, the, the second quarter. And while the Chinese demand is something that the market seem to be playing on right now, what's your sense on the developed world? Uh, how do you look at the Europe demand coming back, U.S. same? Well, the energy crisis in Europe has obviously been called off. Um, we uh, we were obviously see, saw a lot of reports, everyone getting busy about calling the end of Europe uh, at the end of last year. It hasn't happened. The industrial production is, is holding up, even though gas demand is down by in places like Germany by 20%. So we, we learned to live with... With higher price, we're now rationalized, and and we're now seeing the the impacts. And obviously, Germany, as a as an example, is a very is is very dependent on on demand from China. So if we do have a a positive China story, that will also likely be a positive uh, Europe story. A little bit more concerned about the uh, the U.S. because obviously we got a lot of conflicting data there right now. We saw the leading indicators yesterday, just basically highlighting that we will that we will see a recession within the next few months even though it may not, uh, the next few quarters, even though it could be a shallow one, it will raise some concerns about the, the demand out, outlook in, in the U.S. But generally, the transformation process that we're seeing is ongoing, and it will be it will be continuing at, at a very brisk pace, uh, and almost no matter the, the, the level of economic activity uh, mm -hmm. uh, in general. All right. Before uh, we take a break, Ola, I also want to understand on what's your sense on the precious metal. I mean, you've talked about gold and we have Philip and Michael absolutely waiting on the other side of this break to talk about that. But let's start with you. What's your sense? How do you look at the precious metal prices right now? Well, we like gold uh, throughout last year. We saw gold had a fantastic 2022 trading unchanged in dollars at a year where we had a massive jump in the dollar and massive jump in yields. Now some of these are starting to uh, to reverse, and that's obviously providing a lot of head, uh, a lot of tailwind. At the same time, as I said, we we got leading indicators potentially indicating a a recession that's uh, bringing down the risk of higher higher interest rates, and that's bringing down the dollar as well. So all in all, it's really a almost a Goldilocks outlook for for the metals right now. Just again, just like copper, I just want to be a little bit uh, devil's advocate that it's it's happened uh, maybe a little bit too fast and too soon. Mm. And uh, with that in mind, um, I'm looking for uh, for better buying opportunity than than current levels. But the the direction for the year that we've seen started with with gold is the right one. Silver, I'm a little bit perplexed about. Uh, it's not following it's not following suit, even though we have the strong uh, rallies in in industrial metals. So uh, so silver is the uh, still uh, silver and platinum is still waiting on waiting in the wings, but uh, gold for now is the one that's attracting all the attention. Oh, it absolutely is. $19, $30 rounds plus, plus kind of levels is what we're trading on. Ole, as always, thank you so much for joining us and talking, taking through us all those metal prices there. But with that, it's time for a short break. But do not go anywhere. We shift focus completely to precious metals when we return.